so this session is now being recorded. Um, the recording will be made online and we'll circulate it to all of our attendees as well via email. Um, and if you could just refrain from sharing any screenshots of any personal information, things like um, uh, names in the chat, that would be great. So this is what the webinar will cover today. We're going to have a brief review of CMALT, first of all, just for those of you who aren't too familiar with it. Um, we'll just run you through the basics of CMALT. Um, we're then going to look at the benefits of CMALT in FE with our three guests, Sammy, Rachel and Lynn. And then each of those um, guests are going to talk about their experiences of CMALT in FE as well. And then at the end, we're going to have a discussions, um, FAQs and Q&A session. So we'll get started with an overview of um, CMOP. Sorry about that, I lost you all for a second. I don't think you could hear me. Hopefully I'm back now. Can someone just confirm you can hear me? We can hear you now. We can oh, hear you now, yes. Thank you. So I'll start again with an overview of CMOLT. So um, CMOLT is our peer review um, accreditation scheme. We have three strands to, to the scheme, um, Associate CMOLT, CMOLT and Senior CMOLT. So our candidates register for the strand that they want to do. And you can see from the screen here, that we've got um, different requirements for each of the strands. So associate CMO is for people who are early into their career or people who maybe just have a small amount of learning technology involvement within their um, job role. And then regular CMO is for more of a st an established learning technology professional. And we kind of recommend about three years experience or more for regular CMO. And then we've got senior CMOLT, which is for a more experienced learning technology professional um, who has some sort of management, leadership or strategic responsibilities or can demonstrate an equivalent level of impact. So those are the three strands that we have. And once our candidates have registered for their chosen strand, they have two years to complete a portfolio of work. So the portfolio follows our four um, core principles, which you can also see on the right hand side there. So I'll just give you a second to look at those. So you can see we've got a commitment to communicate and disseminate best practice, commitment to explore and understand the interplay between learning technology, an empathy and willingness to learn from colleagues, and a commitment to keep up to date with new technologies. So all of those are our um, CMOL core principles, and the criteria that we follow to assess our portfolios are all based around these four core principles. So the criteria that, that we use are all followed by our team of voluntary assessors. So all of our assessors are current CMOT holders who volunteer their time to assess other new candidates to make it a peer assessed scheme. And in terms of CMOT in FE, currently we have around 300 CMOT holders, um, but a very small percentage of those are actually in further education. So we're really keen to encourage more people in the further education to come and represent that community within CMOLT. So to delve further into um, CMOLT and FE, um, again, I'd like to introduce Sammy White, Rachel Oner and Lynn Taylorson, who are all going to talk firstly about the benefits of CMOLT and FE. So um, can we introduce you three? Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure who's going first. Is it it's just a, a nice fair fight? I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Lynn. <laughs> Are you sure? See, by speaking first, I kind of send you volunteer. Are you absolutely certain? Are we not going in a, in a kind of associate or CMOLT or senior order? I think um, I think the slides are me next, I think. Yeah, that's what I thought, Sammy. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> 
Yeah, so morning everyone. My name is Sammy. I am an associate CMALT holder um, and I achieved my CMALT, it feels like a long time ago now, um, but it was a couple of years ago. Um, it is almost due to be renewed. Um, and I think for me, one of the most powerful things about being in FE was finding that wonderful humans like Lynn um, had already gone through this framework and had already received recognition. And I think one of the biggest things is that we we don't we do a lot of devaluing in FE. We do a lot of devaluing of skills and we do a lot of devaluing of pathways. And, you know, we're very much the, the poor relation of many sectors. But this was an opportunity to celebrate the work that we had done as a team. Um, and a few of us explored it as a pathway as well and celebrate how the journey we'd taken with technology as well. And um, so I did add a cheeky slide as well. So if you could just pop it on one more slide for me, that would be great. Um, because what I wanted to really draw out here is, and, and I know Fiona's just done a great job of explaining this, but Associate CMOL is the pathway for you if you are an early career professional or just moved into a learning technology related role. So if you are just starting out on your learning technology role, now would be a really great time to think about an associate CMOL, to think about how you can reflect on the decisions that are happening, the processes that are happening, how you can reflect on how you're finding your feet in this technology related role, how you are developing in these technology related um, ways, what decisions are happening and what is the impact of that? When I think about the core principles of the portfolios that we assess against and one of the great privileges is once you um, achieve an accreditation, you are asked if you would like to assess future submissions. And when I think about the core values and how you connect with colleagues, how the interplay between technology and colleagues and communication um, and education and pedagogy lay out, if you are just starting out in a learning technology related role, this is a really great time to take that moment to reflect and to evaluate those skills because they'll be developing. It's quite a rapid learning journey when you start out in technology. And it's really important to set good foundations for what's gonna happen for you going forward. And also one of the biggest things for me about being an educator or in education is we learn best when we reflect on practice and CMOL is a really great way to do that. So it's not just if you're starting out, but if you've got less than three years experience, which very often I think there's, <laughs> we change roles quite often in FE. Um, so you might only have three years experience and there's a really valuable three years that you have lots to share. Um, but the biggest thing I wanted to just flesh out is if you only engage with learning technology as a small part of your role. So perhaps you are an English as a second language tutor, but you use technology in your classroom. Associate CMOL is for you um, if it's not your main bread and butter. If you are not that technology person, you are still that technology person if you are using technology. I think we think that we can't be that person because we're not that person in that role, but actually, Associate CMOL is for you if you use technology and it's a smaller part of your role. Um, and I just wanted to really draw on that. When I became um, accredited, it was really powerful for me it, internally at work um, because it meant that we could recognise the journey that we'd taken. But externally, the community with ALT is quite spectacular. There are so many incredible humans and you almost then get this if you're old, file a fax. If you're not old, you won't know what that reference is. Um, of contacts that you can ask questions to and be like, oh, I'm trying this. How can I do this? Oh, I'm trying this. How can I do this? And you, you gain that when you join alt. So it's a really important thing to be recognized. But I think the added benefit is that you become friends with lots of amazing humans as well. I'll stop talking now. And I think it's Rachel next. Thank you, Sammy. I was I was starting my mic and at the same time typing that I still have a file of facts and I stopped using it about two years ago when I became confident with my online calendar and got one that actually worked. How about that for a bit of a dinosaur that turned completely digital? Thank you, Sammy. <laughs> it's 
So, um, yeah, uh, thank you um, very much to um, Alt for inviting me to speak. I, I felt very privileged because I'm quite a newish um, holder of um, CMALT, so it was lovely to be to be asked to do this. Um, and if you don't mind clicking the, the next slide, please, Fiona. Um, I thought what I'd do is I'd just sort of like talk to you a little bit about um, the benefits, because that's that's what we're here for, really, isn't it? To talk about the benefits. And um, it, it, for me, there have been loads. There's been absolutely loads of benefits. And I completely echo what Samia said about being part of a network of some fantastic individuals. And I also have to thank Lynn as well, um, because when I was thinking about taking on um, this journey, uh, I, I gave her a call and we had a chat and she shared some wisdom and resources um, and uh, sort of, yes, gave me encouragement encouragement that I was uh, I was doing the right thing because I suppose like many and I think Sammy's alluded to it as well you can often doubt you think well am I actually you know um, sufficiently good enough to do this do I use digital learning technologies enough to, to do this and I think that's something that we do we, we self-doubt a lot I certainly I certainly do but anyway um, three benefits that you know I took out from this and I thought the first one was to really think Sorry, about um, stronger sorry that was my Siri on my phone if you heard that um <laughs> gaining stronger recognition for um learning technology skills and experience so I'm um freelance basically um although I do work with lots of different organizations to support their provision um and I I really wanted to demonstrate that I have up-to-date skills that are valued by the sector I think that's really important to be um current to be um you know not just you know a, 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 an expert in your field but have current knowledge when you are talking to people and encouraging them to use digital learning technologies that you know what you're talking about basically um and, and I wanted to show that I I held sort of high professional standards really in digital pedagogy so just as a bit of a parallel, a couple of years ago, I, I gained ATS um, that some of you, you might be familiar with um, from the Society of Education and Training, its advanced teacher status. And that too was a rewarding process, which allowed me to crit critically reflect really on my um, own practices. And the aim of ATS is quite broad and, and ends with validation of your skills as a teacher in FE. But I wanted to go a little bit further and I wanted to really validate my journey as a teacher who um, embraces digital technologies to, to improve my role uh, and that of my peers, those that I help support within organisations. Um, and ultimately, of course, like we all do, sort of outcomes for learners, really. So, yes, ALT was that journey indeed. Um, second point there is, is to demonstrate my commitment um, to the uh, importance um, of learning technology. So demonstrating that commitment became really, really important for me. Um, as a teacher trainer, which is what I dedicate the majority of my time to, um, I've been able to support teachers to use digital ed tech um, wherever they can, really, in their classes. Um, and uh, I don't want to just advise, as I said before, um, I want to refer to the practices of others as well. I want to show the good work that's happening in the sector and be able to sort of showcase that, really. Um, so I talk to people as much as I can um, about new tech and I try and demonstrate its use firsthand. So as Sammy says, digital learning technologies, pedagogy is very, very important and it has been for some time. But actually with this sort of fast moving digital ed tech sector that we work in um, and in course, of course, I'd have to mention the incoming force that is um, AI. Um, it's necessary that we really prepare our learners for the future. Um, so overall, I wanted to show my commitment by gaining that high standard accreditation, which is really respected within the sector. So I was delighted to start this whole process, really. So thirdly, um, I wanted to develop transferable skills, as it says there, which can be applied across all education sectors and industry. Now, this is one is really, really important to me for many reasons. The first would have to be that whilst um, I work a lot with mainstream FE colleges in my job, I've actually never worked for one and I've worked with a lot of other in lots of other settings. So I've worked in adult community learning, I've worked in work-based learning for independent training providers, and I've worked for 
for a few years in um, prison learning as well. So each one of those settings has got really different priorities um, and constraints, if you like, within digital technology. Um, and, and I had a special focus within my CMOL journey of um, focusing on prison learning and also ESOL, which is what I um, am mainly um, accredited for as a teacher, which is English for speakers of other languages. But going, just thinking about prison learning for a moment, um, the most challenging of all settings to embed digital technology. Um, so I could say that probably the word digital for most teachers within prison was at once, and for some still is a bit of a, a, a bad word, really. It's a challenging area to go in. Of course, there's limited digital learning technology for both learners and teachers. Um, and, you know, but they, the teachers are still expected to improve the digital skills and digital literacies of their learners. So as part of this CMOLT journey, I was really, really happy to sort of work alongside some um, prison tutors as well um, and look at how they can improve the digital skills um, and literacies of their learners without necessarily having all of the tech there at hand to be able to use. Um, and yeah, just to, to really just to try and embed, as I said, the, the digital skills improve the outcomes for their learners and their confidence really. Um, ESOL, I mentioned, is, an, is another sector where traditionally teachers have had low tech classrooms. You know, la learning a language is very much hands on, auditory work, very kinesthetic um, and, and low tech, I suppose. Um, but there's so much out there. And during the pandemic, there was a, a huge surge in um, digital skills within ESOL. But the teachers needed a lot of support. And certainly the old process gave me even more confidence to support my peers um, in embracing this new technology and, and, in, and using it effectively, should I say, which is a big word, doesn't it? And it promises a lot, <laughs> but not just use technology for the sake of it. Let's just, you know, let's just have a, a PowerPoint here and a Kahoot quiz here. And, and OK, I've embedded technology. It's looking at it and looking at how it's actually linked to the wider learning aims, how you're actually increasing the skills of learners um, and, and as yourself. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed the process. Being able to share, it's been incredibly important with for me. Um, and yeah, just the next slide um, there, just to reiterate what um, Fiona said at the beginning, um, the CMOLT's really likely for you to be for you if you are um, an established learning technology professional or practitioner such as myself, you've got three or more years experience um, and you engage with learning technology throughout most aspects of your role. Um, but you're not leading on it as such, but it is, you know, in, in, it sort of infiltrates most of your role, really. But yes, I would advise anybody to do it because it's a really good, good journey. OK, I think I've banged on enough now as well. So I'm going to hand over to the lovely Lynn. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you very much. Um, yes, I have the, the misfortune of, of just following two people who kind of pretty much said it all because that, that was brilliant. And thank you both. Um, so I'm, I'm bringing up the rear here. I, before I talk about senior CMALT specifically, um, I'm just going to just just talk about the whole thing in general. Um, I think CMALT is, is absolutely unique. I mean, Rachel's already touched on the fact that as FE teachers or digital practitioners. I, I, I struggle with learning technologists because um, I think to a certain extent we all are. So we might be not student facing or student facing, but anyone who's using any element of digital pedagogy. I kind of think nowadays, having worked in an ILT team at Heart of Worcestershire College a few years ago, that it's actually pretty much seamless. And teachers are working so amazingly with people that we might have viewed as not student facing, that nowadays, you know, you've got ILT staff, we might call them creating things like quizzes and collaborating in, in VLE paths for different learners to follow and things like that. And, and it's all that, that all of those boundaries are blurring. So um, I don't know if we need to come up with a new name for what all of this is, because um, we're all learning technologists now, I think. But I think the reason that CMOT is unique is speaking from an FE practitioner, a lecturer, an educator, supporter of learning perspective, 
there are quite a few options for us for professional recognition. Um, you know, Rachel's already touched on the fact that through Society of Education and Training, you can do ATS. We've got the Chartered College of Teaching. If you're more um, HE facing, you know, we, we've got HEA. There are lots of options, but only CMALT recognises our digital educator identity. And I, and I think that is absolutely so important. Um, because it since you know perhaps increasingly since lockdown it's become a phenomenally important important part of our pedagogy and our practice and it's very rare to find an educator that isn't using digital in some way and i think for whatever part of their journey as, as sammy has, or, has already touched upon for whatever part of your journey you can be capturing your expertise and there really isn't another professional education to um, professional accreditation rather that actually captures that part of, of the professional um, portfolio of a digital educator or whatever we might call them. And I think it's such an important part to put forward, you know, for if you're looking for progression routes or anything like that. These are the kind of things that um, employers um, education providers are going to look for the proof of your of your skills and your pedagogy with digital. And for me, it's absolutely unique in terms of that. Um, the thing that I like about Senior CMALT is, and again, I'm not sure what else we would call it, but it is not really some hierarchical thing. Oh, I was um, just a part time lecturer. I, one of the phrases I hate, just a part time lecturer. So I will do associate or I'm, I'm a newish lecturer now um, or, or working in some kind of newish learning technology role. Um, I will do CMALT. Oh, I've been here for 10 years and I've got a, a higher title in the company hierarchy. I will go for senior CMALT. It actually isn't that simple. It may work like that, but actually senior CMALT is for you if you've got any kind of role in, in leading teams. So you might be working within a curriculum department and you're, you're not the curriculum lead or, or a faculty lead, whatever you might call it. You might be the digital champion. And if you are in that capacity, helping others to um, use learning technology, or perhaps you're looking at appraising the way that the current technology is working then you can be doing senior CMALT. Um, and, and I very much like the fact that when it comes to the senior CMALT, we've got people at all stages of careers in all different roles saying, well, yes, actually, I do have some leadership um, capabilities, some leadership responsibilities for what I do with learning technology. So I think, you know, we'll probably go into this in greater depth in a while. There's, there's some nuance in terms of which one you choose. And it isn't as simple as, oh, I've been doing this for 10 plus years. I must be senior. Um, so I, I think, you know, before before you choose which one is for you, it, it's very good. And one of the things that significantly helped me, because I, I did do my um, CMALT before moving on to senior CMALT, is that Alt have so generously made many example portfolios available. So what you can do is go online and look at all the wonderful creative people who've done it before you. And when I was doing my CMALT and, and senior CMALT, that was absolutely invaluable to look at some, for instances, of what kind of evidence gets drawn together. So I think we'll probably circle back round again to talk about the portfolio itself. So I'm not going to necessarily go into incredible depth there, but hopefully that's that's given you an idea and debunked some ideas of who senior CMALT might be for. So that's me. I'm not sure who'd like to pick up next if we're going to go in and sort of talk about um, questions or people would like to hear a little bit more about the portfolio itself. We'll be guided by you. I think maybe if we pick up on the portfolios for now while people are gathering mm -hmm. their thoughts. Um, Great I, idea, yes. Yeah. I really love the register 
of portfolios that you can go through and you can look at um, and you can filter by FE and you can filter by associate or CMO or senior CMO so you can see what someone has done before you and it's not that you're going to replicate their work in any way shape or form but you'll be able to go oh that does sound like me oh I do do a bit of that oh yes that is something that i i look at as well so i think a really great source of inspiration is probably to explore those portfolios as well and then identify which pathway speaks to you as well as what we've shared on here um what about you guys rachel and lynn when you um you mentioned <laughs> rachel you mentioned you looked at lynn's as well i think we all looked at lynn's <laughs> the original <laughs> oh no we all looked at Marin's Marin was very much the original <laughs> <laughs> but this is it we are all inspired by other people but um perhaps there may be something about what how how long does it take to put it together what how did it feel when you were putting putting it together and uh, Rachel do you want to go first yeah sure first of all I really like the flexibility that was around there with you being able to put whatever format you wanted to the portfolio I, I like that um I think because I I, I, I like I like being creative <laughs> um I think my, my neurodivergent self there goes into the fact that you know I find it sometimes quite hard to be restricted to certain kind of um you know formats um but uh yeah Padlet was the one for me um most people that know me know that I'm a little bit freak a, a freak of Padlet um and indeed Lynn you had done yours as well in Padlet as well so that was a good um a, a good guide but as to how long did it take um again because it is um you know it's an organic document that you can keep adding to it didn't feel particularly like um it was an onerous task i felt it was really enjoyable you know and something that was flexible that you could keep going into and amending and adding to um so i did my cmult over a few months I'm trying to actually remember I can't recall whether it was something in the region of about nine months or something like that to put it together um and uh yeah even whilst it's being sort of assessed you you can you know you can even sort of like refer to it and, and as long as you tell your assessor you can keep you know adding to it because there might be some valuable um evidence that you're putting together right at the last minute um but it yeah it was a it was easy in that respect it wasn't onerous at all um, so yeah, I certainly enjoyed that part of the process, the creativity. What about you, Lynn? Yes, um, thanks, Rachel. Yeah, that, that is it for me. Um, I, I have to say the, the real clincher about the enjoyment of CMOT is the portfolio flexibility. And um, Sammy, thank you, has just posted a link to the portfolios there, which, as she says, are, are filterable. So you can have a look and, and, and see which one you think might apply to you. Um, I'm like Rachel, so I did my first portfolio and Padlet. And then for my senior portfolio, I, I wanted to actually get to grips with um, WordPress because it had been many years since I'd done any kind of that any of that type of design. Um, and a few of my students were using it for things like blogs. Um, so I actually used the senior CMOT as an excuse to get to grips with WordPress. So I was actually learning a technology whilst putting it there, but putting it together. But I think I don't want to name any names, but some professional accreditations are an absolute straitjacket. And it is so good that all of the CMOT routes just say to people, bring us your evidence. It can be a Google Doc, it can be Padlet, it can be some sort of blog or website. And that gives you, um, you know, Rachel's used the word creativity. It gives you absolute free reign to show how creative you are. That, that is the wonderful thing about it. And that opens the door for you being able to use such a richness of evidence. So I'm sure that um, Sammy and Rachel will help me add to this, but typical evidence that you might have, you might share a learning resource that you've put together. You might share some planning documents, anonymized, obviously, to, uh, to make sure that we're keeping things confidential. When you're setting a project, you might actually, if you're doing a senior CMOT, follow a project through from inception to evaluation 
with the kind of assets like, you know, Gantt charts and meeting minutes, testimonials from people. But, you know, nowadays with the amount of richness of evidence we've got, you can have, you know, a manager or even learners. It would be wonderful to have learners contributing to talk about the value of your digital pedagogy via video. That's something that can be done. So you've got this complete freedom about the platform in the widest sense that you use, but also the evidence that you bring along. And I think that the exemplars that are up there really show the types of things that, that people are using. So other than projects beginning to end, student and manager testimonials, um, examples of the learning technology tools that you've been using, ha have I forgotten anything? Oh, I was just having you know, think on mine. Definitely, I put some examples of um, maybe some digital skill sessions that I've delivered to my peers. Um, I put examples of my social media and how I was using social media in a different way. Um, I think uh, a bit like your WordPress example. I've I created my own website. If you'd have told me a few years create my own website I would have laughed but I did it's amazing that I did it and it's such a, a proud moment so that had to go at the top of my CMORC portfolio um, but yes just to sort of you know links anything if, if you speak at an event or a staff meeting and you highlight um, you know the use of a new digital learning tool anything that you feel that has made an impact to your practice and an impact to those of your peers then it's worth sharing isn't it and it, and it shows that your confidence is growing also um, and that's really really important to share I think Yes, absolutely. And a community, that's another thing. So if you've participated in something like a UKFE chat or you've um, been promoting your work maybe at a conference or you've got, you know, those online dialogues, then that's also a great thing to bring to the party to um, to establish that you're part of a wider network. Yeah, I particularly love it um, when I'm assessing portfolios and I see an email of thread of a context of something that happened you introduce something and then this happened and then this person tried it and this person tried it and I love the evidence that we get in the richness of that in that it's not just a one and done um on my favorite saying a sheep dip um it's a consistent supported approach to building technology into practice and that's the biggest thing for me now assessing portfolios is I'm looking for how have you supported other people with taking this to the next level. I almost, I'm almost willing you to have someone who's more of an expert than you at the end of it. Um, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somewhat you inspiring other people and I'm looking for how does that technology change the narrative? Um, and if it doesn't, what did we learn from that? And I think we learned so much about when things don't play out the way we wanted. I once assessed a portfolio and they'd gone all in on a tool and then the setting couldn't afford it for the next year. And so there was a whole section of reflection from the candidate about how that played out and what they tried, what they did and all. And it was a really wonderful thing to read as well. So it doesn't always have to be successful, I'd throw in as well. No, no, I think that's absolutely right. It's a real space for critical reflection. So we, we've gone, I think we've gone large on all of the wonderful evidence you can bring right now. And of course, the portfolio is not just a repository of evidence. Probably the most important part is, is the reflection that follows it. So what have you been doing? What went well? What didn't? What have you learned? What will you do next time? Um, and I, I think it, it is a very safe space for you to reflect you know we, we all have some horrors and some you know disasters you know Sammy beautifully just described one that was not the candidate's fault at all we've all had that kind of thing happen um, and, and you can reflect on that and what might I have done so that you know it is a it is a really really excellent space for that reflection the one thing that just occurred to me is that also with the richness of the portfolio it is lending itself to use in wider ways, I think, beyond CMALT, because um, I could see, um, looking at some of the amazing example portfolios out there, many of them could be dissected and turn into an amazing blog. 
many of them could be dissected and turned into something, particularly if it's an accessible sort of WordPress site, a showreel, if you like. So if you are, you know, going for a promotion or looking to raise your professional profile, you could make some or all of them public. So I think because of the versatility and the creativity and reflection that you're encouraged to bring to the portfolio, there is a, a potential life for your portfolio beyond actual Seamalt. I don't know what you think about that, Sammy and Rachel. Yeah, I think that's um, really true. And it also shows your commitment to sharing your knowledge, which is one of the core values we're assessing in the portfolio as well. I think one of the things when I achieved a Seamalt was that I felt there was um, people weren't really talking about what was in their portfolios as much and people weren't really sharing as much um, because it was um, early days and the things were moving and we were in we were in quite testing times back then as well and I think now we're in such a collaborative space as a sector and as an old community and um, it would be really wonderful to see you know show reels that just sounds exciting um to amplify the work of some people um and i think that would be something that the sector would really benefit from as a whole as well and it would be really nice to talk about in your recertification in how you lived the values past your certification as well uh, exactly because the, the the portfolio has a section at the end of it where you have to actually sort of write down some of your future plans just reflect as you said which is something that we're encouraged to do through any kind of professional formation or course that we're that we're doing at the moment but being able to set yourself um a uh, action plan a target list of things that you're going to continue doing um it for me was really important um so i think that that part of the portfolio is really really beneficial to narrow down exactly what i wanted to you know keep doing um and and in increase really so overall i think the, the portfolio guidelines are very very clear um mm -hmm. and the way that it's all lent out so yes it, as in says evidence um you know reflection um how you communicate and work with others um you've got a certainly in the CMOL pathway you've got a section in there where you can um detail your specialist areas as well so if if, if you want to um to go down that route you know really think Think about as I mentioned there's a couple of specialist areas that I focused on um, and that's just yeah just really beneficial to, to guide you down a pathway because you might think oh there's just so much ed tech where do I start from where do I go put a nice little plan in the beginning and, and decide what your professional pathway is um, yeah is, is very very useful I wonder yes. if I, oh, sorry Lynn no, go, for, go for it Sammy go for it I wonder as well if it's just worth spending two seconds talking about how the assessment process works as well um yes. so you submit your wonderfully reflective portfolio and that comes into two assessors who assess it um semi-blind we have to know who you are just to check there's not a conflict of interest um but we we ask that everything's anonymized when it comes into your portfolio as well um and then we'll each assess it separately and we won't know what the other person's assessed it as um, and then we have a really interesting moment when Fiona sends us the other person's assessment. And we have a really interesting moment where we look at whether we've agreed or disagreed separately first. <laughs> um, and then we um, have to get together and um, collaborate and agree a grade. And that grade could be a referral um, major, a referral minor, a pass um, and a super pass got a proper name but I call it super pass um but just to say as well I think it's probably okay to share that I was a referral first time round um oh look, no so was, <laughs> so was I so was I Me too, on, on both of them so yes to two referrals yeah. yeah yeah and I think it's important to know that it is a reflective journey so the mm. reflections that you make on that referral are really important to draw out when you have your second um, go at it, which quite quickly comes around and you can have a second submission. Um, and then we will reassess ideally with the same people who saw your portfolio first time around. But if not, one of them and a, another person um, will assess it for you again. Um, so it's a really robust assessment process. And we do try and give feedback that's really constructive, really detailed and really draws out what we liked and what we would like to see 
more of in there as well. It's a little bit like having your work proofread for grammar and spelling, isn't it? It's kind of like you can read something over and over again and not realise that you've got a spelling or punctuation mark. It takes somebody else. And I think the referrals actually was really positive because it was kind of on the lines of, I don't think you've sold yourself enough here or I don't think you've given yourself enough information here. It wasn't the kind of um, sort of feedback that just made me feel um, demotivated and, and not want to go on. It, it was it was positive and I could see why it was very clear why I'd been referred. So um, I, I wouldn't let if you are one of those 70 percent of Fiona's just put into chat who are referred, I wouldn't let it, you know, put you off, really. Mm. Yes, yeah, thank you, Fiona. I didn't know it was 70 percent, but that, that just speaks to, I think, the robustness of the process. But, yeah, if I, I can just sort of second that, the, the feedback, because I had two minor referrals on mine, is just so tremendously supportive and very detailed. We've all had referrals in the past or we've given referrals to students and thought, gosh, that really wasn't didn't have you know the specific nature that I needed to really hone in on. And. I mean, I think I turned around the referrals probably in about an hour because it was so precise what the additional evidence needed to be. I think one was an additional piece of evidence and one was a more um, a more detailed reflection, a, a more critical reflection. But that was very, very clear in the feedback. And I think that, you know, we are we are busy people and, um, you know, a, a referral is always something that you just think oh no look how much extra work have I got to do and I think you can be confident that um, if there are any little bits and bobs of extra work you will know precisely due to the excellent assessors um, exactly what you need to do. And I, I think I've probably mentioned at this point I, I've done quite a few associate CMOL assessments recently and there is a real trend in what I'm giving as feedback which is this is a really good example, but you fail to tell me the impact of this on other people and how this has played out and what that conversation looked like. And what, what because we weren't in the room, we can't see how that conversation happened. So it's really up to the candidates mm -hmm. to articulate how did that conversation happen when you were sharing the new technology or you were inspiring a learner or what happened and, and all that richness, you were in the room and you remember it. Um, and so it's just a plea to really make sure you articulate that down and reflect on that for us when we're assessing. Mm -hmm. And because that's that's the good stuff that we're really looking for. Yes, good point, Rachel. I, th I think we've we've come round to a natural point for for questions on a, on any of these things or thoughts. Yeah, re reflections as well as questions. Feel feel free to take yourselves off of mute mm -hmm. or pop something into chat. Yes, absolutely. Everyone hates typing in chat, so please do. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh yes, good question. Do you want me to cover that question, Lynn? That would be super, thank you, Vian, that would be brilliant. Yeah, sure. So thanks, Francis, for your question on the process. So how it works, you sign up um, on our website, you choose the strand that you're interested in, associate CMOLT or senior CMOLT and then once you've signed up you have two years to complete your portfolio so obviously we don't recommend it takes two years but you've got the two years time to actually complete um, so we've got three submission windows per year so we open submissions in January May and September and you can submit in any of those windows throughout your two years of, of, your, of being a CMOLT candidate and then once you have submitted, obviously you go through the assessment process and you get your your outcome back within a few months of, of submission. So like um, the ladies were just discussing, you can often get referral, sometimes a pass first time. Um, if you get a referral, then you have um, plenty more time to complete your second submission. It doesn't need to fall within that two years. So if you've submitted at the end of your two year window, then you can do your resubmission after that two years. So the um, you don't have to do both within that first first two years. So I hope that helps, Francis. Great, thank you. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Lynn, Rachel or Sammy?
this is a question to everyone else is because I'm, I'm guessing that people who are attending today are thinking about doing um, one of the pathways. I just wondered, is, is, is what you've heard today, has it sort of helped make your minds up, I suppose, or, or I guess you're going to go away and reflect a little bit more. But, you know, have we covered anything that maybe was holding people back, you know, and, and prevent them from putting an application in? Well, what are your motivations as well? Do do let us know in chat what your motivations are for doing it. That would be a good one. Simon, you've got your hand up, I think. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, hi there. Thanks for that. It was very useful. I'm brand new to this because I've just signed up. Uh, I've just started my um, digital learning designer apprenticeship. And um, so this is all very new to me and it's all very interesting. So that was really useful f for me. And uh, it's just sort of, it's just helped me sort of get a little bit of understanding around how things work and a bit more background information on uh, what the community is like, um, things like that, really. So it's yeah, it's it's all it's all incredibly new, and I'm just finding my feet. But it's all it's all really interesting. So I just wanted to say thanks for that. It's been very useful. Oh, it's a pleasure. And I think you know um, the the first step. I think is you know we, we've already been. Uh, been just so complimentary about them go and have a look at the sample portfolios that's mm. the thing to do get on there and just have a yeah. look at the variety because um i think one thing that you can take comfort from I, i've done accreditations where i've been scrabbling around shall we say for for evidence you are likely to find that you have got an embarrassment of riches when it comes to evidence and there are many you know we all do such variety in terms of community and creation and collaboration mm that you know you will doubtless have the the evidence needed for this you know there, there's no doubt about that can can we just turn to something from francis which was a really 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 great point it will maybe help me push back against managers who aren't keen on technology use in learning so cmalt as a as a political lever I, I find that very interesting you can pop your microphone on francis and tell us a little bit more about that if you'd like um, no, I'm, uh, well, I'm currently learning and development coach at Sheffield College and during lockdown my role was obviously really focused on coaching all my college colleagues with technology and since then we've kind of taken quite a few steps back and I've just got a new manager mm -hmm. and his big thing is introduce um, a paper exercise book to show progress and I'm kind of really fighting against that because it's not how I see things developing in the future. So it, this could be really one way of helping me to demonstrate and show and prove and, and help me, I think. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, I, I think, you know, we are going to see more of this. We're seeing some go backery um, following, um, you know, lockdown ending, but also the incredible moral panic. A lot, a lot of the professional development I do for teachers is around AI and the push for we'll know that evidence is authentic if it was written down with a biro is going to be huge. So we actually do have quite um, quite a battle on our hands here um, with people saying, well, you know, this needs to be robust. We will get them to write it down and they won't use digital because chat GPT or, or whatever. So I, I think that's a really, really powerful point you're making there. Thank you. Yeah, so Simon's saying he has briefly looked at the portfolios and found it reassuring. Uh, he's done some similar work that looks uh, a little similar. Um, yeah, as I said before, it's an organic document. And as soon as you start putting stuff in, you think, oh, yes, I can add that to it too. And it's, it's mm. a little bit addictive, actually, <laughs> to keep adding to your portfolio. <laughs> well, I mean, why wouldn't you actually? Because, you know, we've, we've mentioned briefly that after three years, you're going to re-accredit. So why not keep it as a living document? Um, you know, you could do a different sections for this is the evidence after it was first passed. Um, I love Emma's comment here. Um, it's Emma F rather than Emma P. Um, new team members recently employed. I'm considering whether CMALT might be a way for us to do um, these things at our different levels to actually get the CMALT learning community sort of, you know, um, co-mentoring and, and supporting each other. That sounds wonderful. I think as well, I think if we think about FE, let's take a college setting, we have centralised teaching and learning teams that have elements of technology to their roles. And then you have 
teaching and learning people who have technology as a main part of their role. So I think it would be quite a natural fit to have a CMOC community within an FE college um, and give some accreditation and time to reflect. It almost becomes a badge of that I've had time to reflect um, and time to reflect on practice as well. Um, and it shows that you're committed to your own personal development um, as well. Um, and I think that time to reflect is the most critical part that all three of us drew upon in our discussion today. And what better way to celebrate a teaching and learning team in a college setting? I, I can't think of one. No, absolutely. And, and, you know, I can picture it as, you know, colleagues at different, you know, um, different levels of experience on, on their journey in the organisation by having some team CMOLP happening, happening and looking at each other's evidence. You are, by definition, finding more about the processes and the wonderful work that the organisation's doing by sharing evidence. And if that could actually be cross-curricular, I think it could be even more powerful. You know, CMOLP as a cross-organisational CPD tool it is a very interesting um, concept. I, I love Emma's comment there, which she said about, um, you know, there was 12 of them signed up at the same time and had meetings and peer support. I did something very, very similar for my ATS journey. We had a group of us and we used to, we had a WhatsApp group. We had um, sort of writing rooms where we'd all sign on at the same time and be working on our portfolios, in, you know, independently, but all in a Zoom room together. Um, and it was just, it, it was really beneficial to do that, actually, and bounce ideas off of each other. Mm. Simon? Yeah, what you've just said there, I think, is a is a really fantastic idea because for, for learners like myself, I I'm one of these people that I like to bounce ideas off of other people. And often if I bounce an idea off another person, they might say, Well, have you thought about doing it in this way? And then it gives me a whole new avenue of ideas to explore um, <clears throat> and to take further because that is very much how I like to work. So that sort of college where you sign up with a number of you there and then you set up meetings and offer peer support that's I think it's a really good way to do it yet yeah, for, for me this is such an exciting sort of part of my career because something that was said earlier and I forget who said it I do apologize resonated really well with me because we all went through COVID and at the fire service we had to quickly adapt our working so I work in I work in uh, the prevention team and I develop I design develop I designed, delivered, evaluate lots of the prevention training. So we went from pretty outdated methodology, method, methodology really. We were doing back, cl um, classroom based, face to face, chalk and talk, and it was all very, very dated. And I wanted to progress it anyway. But when COVID came along, that necessity is the mother of invention, and it just made us evolve quickly overnight and so we went straight away we got a, a subscription to rise we were using teams we were using poly v slido we were using lots and lots of different ways of communicating with our learners i've got 1000 or i had 1118 learners to communicate with across the fire service and then there was my external learners as well so social workers police housing officers nhs workers so all of a sudden, instead of going to do these huge sort of face to face learning sessions, we had to go to new digital technology. And for me, it was the best thing for my career, really, because it it enabled me to bring in the changes that I wanted to bring in. And it would have taken, I don't know, five years, but we did it overnight because we were forced to. So <clears throat> because the seniors where I worked I thought, oh, this is good. We're saving money, we're seeing more learners, it's more efficient, it's more accessible to our learners. Um, so we were managed, we were able to be very um, positive and promote digital learning um, quite well. And it, that sort of stuck around in the fire service. And now we're using that to our advantage. So this sharing of good practice and this sharing of ideas for me is invaluable because I really want to push any ideas people can share forward to my organization so we can really bring on our digital learning yeah. and the, 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 th the thing for me is um i know covid was terrible and i got long covid myself and i suffered badly from it but to, to remain positive we did learn so much from that that horrible situation that necessity forced us to 
dip our toe into pools that we would never have normally done. And um, yeah, long may this sort of evolution continue. And I'm going to be banging the drum where I work to 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 really to really try more innovative solutions, try more things, and do it quicker and better. So that's why I'm so so pleased to be um, a new member of these communities and to to hopefully share my learning that I can I can gain from. From, from other people with a lot more experience than me. I'm brand, I'm brand new in this area. Uh, reluctantly, I'm brand new and I want to learn so much more and pass it on. So yeah, this is brilliant for me. Oh, that, that's, that's really wonderful to hear. And, um, you know, I think as we, as we touched on earlier, um, you know, you'll be able to take artifacts from your portfolio and have it in, in the organization's newsletter. Why not have, you know, a learning technology blog, something like that? There are many, many purposes for, for reusing um, your portfolio. Um, and, I, and, you know, and I think that can be a very persuasive argument across uh, organization. Absolutely. I'm loving what's going on. Explain to me, Rachel, while, while we've been, been chatting, there seems to be some kind of joint CMOT group emerging. Is this <laughs> there is, yeah, because Francis <laughs> had a lovely suggestion that, you know, let's get a group going and do it together. Um, I don't know whether or not that's something that maybe, you know, on the back of this, um, Alt could help just you know, initiate, get off the ground and let, leave, let, let, let people do it. But yeah, no, maybe um, share uh, initial contact details and, and set up a group. I think that would be fantastic. So Fiona, I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what I can do is after this session, we can um, I can get in touch with everybody and just get them to confirm um, they're happy for me to share their contact details, and then we can um, we can go from there. Sounds great. Wonderful. And obviously, we're happy to pop into the group if you if you invite us and you think it would be be useful. We can uh, we can do that. Fantastic. That sounds great. Absolutely. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much to the three of you, Lynn, Rachel and Sammy. It's been such a great session. I think everyone's got something really useful out of it. It's even me. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been really, really great to, to hear your experiences. And um, hopefully we can encourage it. Well, it sounds like we can hopefully encourage some people to uh, to come along and, and take part in CMALT. So that's uh, really, really great. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thanks um, for inviting thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yes. You're welcome. And I'll send the recording out to everybody. And like I say, I'll I'll um I'll get your permissions to share contact details, and hopefully um you can get your group set up. Wonderful. Good That's good. Everyone, meet everybody. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs>